Wayne, ladies and gentlemen, we've invited the first class. Now we're inviting the executive platinum, platinum emerald staff. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Crew Travel right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Rhea. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome back Lee Harris from Blue Marine Travel. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks, Rhea. How about yourself? Great. Well, as I said before, every morning you wake up is a good one. We certainly is. Yep, they're the best ones, aren't they? Yeah, and it looks like, you know, spring has sprung and summer's around the corner and the med scene is, season is heating up. And yeah, it's, you know, we've seen all these, a lot of, COVID things drop out now and, and it looks like life is sort of returning back to normal. It does. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we don't want to try and talk too early, do we? But it <laughs> certainly seems that way. I mean, it's good. It's good for you guys that, you know, spring is sprung and you're getting ready for summer. Whereas here we are now hitting our cold patch. It is, it is extremely cold in the mornings. I've got to say, my kids are nagging me like crazy to put the heating on, which I refuse to do. Especially with the price rises that we've seen straight across the face of the planet. Oh, my word. Do you know what? (laughs) My cost in January, and there's just myself and my two children, it was like 500 euros in January and February each for electricity. And that was because of the heat. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Absolutely crazy prices um i mean we haven't noticed it quite so much here yet i'm sure we probably will now that winter's kicking in that's when the price rise is going to hit us um yeah. that's how it normally works isn't it um but yeah it's going to be interesting to see what our bills are like that's for sure yeah going broke and i have to mention that crew travels brought to you weekly by blue marine travel who haven't lost a passenger since lee harris was born back in the late 1900s and of course their people move people we do indeed so what's going on in the world of travel right now? Italy's got some good news. They have indeed, yet. Yeah. So the Italian ministry explained this week that all incoming travellers are exempt from the requirements to complete the passenger locator form when entering Italy. Uh, the Italian authorities also announced this past week that travellers are no longer required to wear a face mask uh, when accessing bars, restaurants, museums and supermarkets. Uh, now, despite lifting the restrictions mentioned, uh, Italy still continues to require travellers to meet COVID-19 entry rules. Uh, those currently are that Italy requires all travellers to present a valid COVID proof, uh, that being vaccination recovery or test certificate upon their arrival. Uh, a vaccination certificate is considered valid when reaching Italy only if the document proves that the holder has completed primary vaccination in the last 270 days or has received a booster shot. Uh, on the other hand, a recovery certificate is only accepted if it indicates that its holder has recovered from the virus in the last 180 days. Uh, as for the negative COVID-19 tests, uh, the Italian ministry has emphasised that the country accepts both PCR and rat tests. Uh, the PCR test is, uh, is accepted if it has been taken within 72 hours before arrival, and the rapid antigen test is accepted if it has been taken within 48 hours before arrival. Is there more and more countries stating that you don't have to be vaccinated, but you just have to show proof of not having the virus? Especially in Europe, yeah, quite a few now. Um, I mean, there are still some notable ones, um, Spain being one. I think um, also Germany, uh, prob- uh, no, actually Germany are okay now. Um, but there are, uh, yeah, there's one or two in Europe, like off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you who they are, but I know there are a few in Europe, not that many, but um, still some that do uh, ban unvaccinated travellers uh, unless they can provide proof for medical reason that they couldn't get the vaccination or whatever. Um, but obviously, if there is any people in there who want to know for definite which countries they are, um, then obviously just reach out to me and I can let them know. Nice. Well, that's good to know because, um, you know, I, I do know, and without getting into a vaccination debate, because I'm not interested in that at all Um, but I do know some people that will not get vaccinated and you know it was for a while there last year it was looking like they wouldn't be able to travel anywhere in the world ever again with you know the requirements to be vaccinated so it's it's nice to know that now the world is sort of opening up in that sense. Yeah, it is. Yeah, a lot more. A lot more countries seem to be uh, getting rid of, uh, you know, all COVID rules, almost going back to pre-pandemic levels, which is, you know, which is great for people who don't want to be vaccinated. That's entirely their choice. Um, so the world is opening up and slowly. Um, yeah, and um, hopefully more will go the same way. Uh, you know, further down the line. Nice. Well, and the EU Commission in regards to visas for he- what's going on there? Yep. So the European. Commission has proposed the abolishment of visa requirements for Qatar and Kuwait nationals, uh, pointing out that these countries have already met the necessary criteria. Uh, Now, according to a press release issued by the authority, the proposal follows a detailed assessment of irregular migration, public policy and security, economic benefits and the union's relations with Qatar and Kuwait. 
Uh, once the EU Council approves the proposal, Qatar and Kuwait nationals will be able to travel to all EU member states uh, for short stays of up to 90 days in any 180 day period, uh, that being for business, tourism or family purposes. Uh, the Commission concluded that Qatar and Kuwait don't represent high risks of irregular migration risks uh, and the countries are open to further cooperation on security issues with the Union. Uh, in addition, both countries already issue biometric identification documents, uh, which is a requirement for visa-free travel to the EU. Great. And some not so good news. We're looking at flight delays straight across the face of the planet as a result, of course, I'm assuming, of lack of staff. Exactly right, yeah. Airport delays will continue throughout the summer and beyond owing to staff shortages exposed by the surge in air traffic. Uh, leaders of the European Airports and Ground Handlers Associations have warned. Uh, a survey by European Airports Association, ACI Europe, found two thirds of airports expected uh, long, long flight delays to increase and more than one third forecast operations will be affected by shortages of airport and ground handling staff. Uh, beyond the summer season. Uh, one in six expect increased flight cancellations because of the staffing crunch. Uh, the airports and ground handlers blame deregulation in the sector for low wages and unsocial hours, uh, basically making it difficult to recruit. Uh, that's as well as the limited state aid in Europe during the pandemic. Wow, well, you know, I mean, low wages is something that people are complaining about straight across the face of the planet. I don't think that's you know, just the airline industry. I think that's every industry at the moment. Exactly right. You know, cost of living's gone through the roof, hasn't it? And, uh, you know, unfortunately, wages are not following suit as well. So it's, um, yeah, it's tough times for people at the moment. Yeah, well, I guess the CEOs are going to have to dig deep into their bonuses in order to make sure their companies continue to run and they continue to get any sort of bonus. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Emirates has made an announcement. Yeah, May the 5th, after a two-year hiatus, Emirates returned to the popular Indonesian tourist destination of Bali. Uh, the route is being served by the Boeing 777 aircraft and operates five times per week. Uh, that's before ramping up to a daily service in two months' time. Uh, the resumption of flights is due to the easing of international restrictions uh, and the rise in demand for passenger travel. Uh, Emirates route from Dubai to Bali, as we said, will operate five times per week until July the 1st, when Emirates will then begin a daily service. Nice. And Spain's made an announcement. Yep, yeah, Spain have decided they're going to extend their COVID uh, entry rules until May the 15th, uh, this meaning most unvaccinated adults are still banned from entering the country. Uh, the Ministry of the Interior made the announcement in the Spanish Gazette stating it would extend an order which was first imposed back in July 2020. Uh, now, unvaccinated travellers aged 18 and over can only enter Spain by showing proof of recovery from COVID within the six months prior to travel. Uh, children aged between 12 and 17 can enter with a proof of a negative PCR test, uh, that being taken within 72 hours before arriving in Spain, while under 12s are exempt from all travel restrictions. Uh, vaccinated adults can enter by showing proof of vaccination within the last 270 days or proof they have had their booster jab. Under 12 is exempt from all travel restrictions. See, this just, it just really weirds me out because these kids are like in school, surrounded, by over 12s as well. And like, I, I don't understand how these laws are made or how people actually think these things up. Like, why would you allow under 12 to come in without a test proving? I mean, it's, it's just a test. It's a little thing that's stuck up your nose. You know, yeah. I, I don't understand the difference just because they're younger. I know, it's strange, isn't it? There are lots of uh, anomalies, shall we say, when it comes to uh, entry rules and regulations with regards to um, certain people. Um, yeah, I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, I mean, at the age of 12, I'm sure they can they can have a PCR or a rats test. I know my kids have had them before and they've not had an issue with them. So, um, yeah, it does seem a strange one that they they get a free pass. But, um, yeah, that's what, that's what Spain have decided. So there you go. And we're just going to continue it on for another week. And then, you know, after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. May 15th, then it'll probably be another week after that. And then another week. <laughs> or then, then they'll just say, you know what? No, we're good. That's it. But I just... <laughs> Once again, if I was queen of the world, right, things would be different. <laughs> I, I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's just because I, not that I'm always right, but I just, I'm kind of common sense, you know, and I think anybody else would be the same. Like, I think most other people are the same. There's just a basic of common sense. And it seems like the governments we keep electing in straight across the face of the planet are sorely lacking in that. 
It seems to be. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's the old um, adage, you know, too many cooks spoil, the, spoil the, 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 the broth or whatever, because I don't know if they have too many people overthinking or whatever, and then they come up with these weird and wonderful ideas or not, whereas you just need one or two in there who can actually, like you say, speak some common sense and get the job done. Yeah, well, we're talking government here. That ain't ever going to happen. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Sorry. Wouldn't be me without, you know, stating the obvious. Um, and we've got crew questions. What's going on there? Uh, we did. Yeah, we did. Uh, Joseph emailed in this week wanting to clarify whether COVID restrictions have been lifted for entering Croatia. Uh, it's actually a very good question, to be honest with you, as this has slipped under the radar a little, I've got to say. Uh, according to news published by the Total Croatia News, which I've looked up, uh, the abolishment of the entry rules, which indicates that travelling is back to the pre-pandemic state, became effective on May the 1st. Uh, for some unknown reason, Croatia didn't, didn't um, notify this or, or give out some sort of grand reopening. It basically did slip right under the radar. Uh, that basically though, means that everyone trying to enter Croatia, carrying any passport coming from anywhere to any border crossing, will be allowed to enter Croatia without being asked any questions with regards to COVID-19. Basically meaning they're back to pre-pandemic uh, entry rules. Wow. And you know what? As all of these countries quickly come online, I can see why this is going to be chaos over the summer, because we have had two and a half years of lockdown after lockdown after lockdown. People haven't been able to like leave their homes, let alone get on an airplane or travel anywhere. So it's almost like this big, oh, my God. And they've saved the money. Right. I mean, they haven't spent money on travel. Those that yep. tend to travel for a summer vacation. Um or a winter vacation. So now they've saved that money and it's gangbusters. Like let's everybody go on vacation at the same time. Um, it, it is gonna be chaos. Like you're gonna have to, I, I don't know. I mean, even just tourists, I would recommend booking with a travel agent because what happens if you know, you're know you flying, you know, sometimes for me anyways, from Canada to, to Spain, uh, there's three or four flights that I have to take and they're booked one right after the other. And if I yeah. have a delay on one or a cancellation on one, then the rest just fall to pieces. And what are you gonna do? If you booked it yourself through some online service, you're screwed because trying to get money back from an airline sometimes takes you 90 days. Not a lot yeah. of people, you know, they may have the money to go on vacation for, you know, they paid the money for that vacation, but they don't have the money to sort of cover three extra flights both ways or four extra flights, yeah. however it may work out. Um, they're usually covered when they work through a travel agent, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. I mean, especially with, uh, you know, the warnings of uh, flight cancellations and, and delays, you know, especially within Europe this, this this summer coming up because of staff shortages at airports and baggage handlers uh, likely to go on strike and stuff. Um, I, I think I know people are going to say I've got vested interest, obviously, working for a travel company. But in all honesty, uh, it makes perfect sense to book for a travel agency. I'm not saying that you have to book with us whatsoever, but um, for for, for peace of mind, I would definitely book with somebody who knows exactly what's going on, who's got the latest information, because although we're seeing the COVID restrictions are open up, there's still the chance that we could go back. You know, it's, it's, yeah. there's nothing to say that a month or two months down the line that, you know, another variant hits and then we have to take a step back again. And, you know, is a real possibility still. Um, so, I mean, if people want to go and book on their own, then, you know, that's all well and good. But like you say, just be aware that, um, you know, you could be waiting a while for a refund. But not only that, if you get stuck at an airport trying to get through to um, airlines at this moment in time, you're still looking at two to three hours, especially yeah. with the amount of people who are going to be traveling this summer. So, um, yeah, for peace of mind, I would book through a travel uh, company who know what they're doing um, rather than trying to take it on yourself. Well, it's like you said, I mean, Singapore is in lockdown now. You know, they went back into a full on lockdown. And now I think yep. they're just starting to ease off some restrictions. But, you know, if that can happen over in Singapore, well, who knows, right? Exactly right. Yep. Yep. It's still, um, yeah, it's still up in the air. We're not completely out of the woods yet, I don't think. So, um, yeah, I think uh, it's better to be safe than sorry, shall we say. Well, Lee, as always, it's been very informative. I appreciate your time. Why, thank you very much. It's nice. It's, uh, I've managed to make two weeks in a row, so it's good, isn't it? <laughs> you just had man flu. Exactly. It's exactly what it was. The rest of I'm us would have powered through. It was a bad case of man flu, I've got to say. <laughs> I, I actually, I did have sympathy for you. That's okay. I, I did feel your pain. <laughs> Why, thank you very much. It's very, uh, very much appreciated. I know. I'm giving you a pass, but no more this year, eh? <laughs> exactly right yeah you took your two days anymore, off this year that's it you're done exactly right anymore and i'm booted off <laughs> anymore i'm firing you <laughs> <laughs>
I have to mention that crew travel is brought to you weekly by Blue Marine Travel, who haven't lost a passenger since Lee Harris was born back in the ni- late night. I've got to change that up at some stage. Um, and of course, their people move people. Spawn. Yep, we do. <laughs> I want to say thank you to everybody for tuning in, of course. And of course, we're going to be back right here next week. My name is Ria. I have been your host. We'll see you again next week. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're boarding passengers seated in zones 